this is probably one of the most important sessions that you're going to sit in today. Okay? Um, and we have this out on our YouTube channel as well, uh, this presentation, or a couple years ago presentation. And we've had a number of our members have sat through this for like two or three years before they finally get it. Okay? But um, we put it up on a PowerPoint slide, and uh, I guess the technology didn't quite catch up, but now we'll go back to the first one. First, I, I, I just want to say, this is, we're going to try to turn fishing into catching, okay? Uh, there's a big difference, right? You go out and take a, take a ride on your boat or whatever, and you go and spend the day, and you don't catch anything except the catfish. Well, probably one of the reasons that you don't catch anything except the catfish is simply because you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time. And truly, a successful trip, if you're a guide, all right, and you get a call and you've got a, you got a trip to run tomorrow, the first thing that you do is check what the tide is. Because the tide is going to tell you where you're going the next morning with your, with your fare. So um, if you're going north, if you're going south, if you're going to fish the flats, or you're going to fish, fish the ICW or whatever, that's going to determine your trip. So we're going to talk a little bit about what... All, that all means, and then I'm going to walk you through some of the real basics of figuring it out, okay? Why is this important? Well, first of all, obviously, it's safety. If you're an offshore angler, and you're running out of Matanzas Inlet in the morning, and you're running out to the ledge, you better have enough fuel to make it back potentially to St. Augustine or Ponce Inlet if you have conditions at the Matanzas Inlet that you can't get in, which is low tide and a wind that's brisk, whichever way that you want that wind to blow, okay? So that, that particular inlet can get really snotty, so you better make sure that you plan for a safer turn either through St. Augustine or Ponce. That's if you're an offshore guy or girl, okay? And the second one is obviously you get access to a spot. Um, great example is um, you want to fish a creek, right? Typically, you're going to find in front of a creek mouth, you're going to find a, a flat, uh, a shallow spot. All right? And if you have a bay boat, as an example, and you want to get up on a flat, you've got to get over that shallow spot. And if you talk to somebody like Captain Tim Jarvis, he's going to tell you that in 15 minutes, I'm going to have enough water to get over that flat spot and get into the deeper water that's behind the flat spot to go up the creek. Okay? So access to a spot... Is, is also paramount. It lets you get to the fish. So you do that calculating when you can get past that spot and to where you want to fish. Then obviously the third one is getting stuck. Tim also mentioned that. Um, you know, uh, a great example, I talked to a member last night on the phone. He's got a brand new gorgeous flats boat. He went up in Long Creek and he said, thank God I sat in your seminar for two years. It took me two years to figure out what you were telling me, which is Watch when the oyster bars pop up and the tide's going out, get the hell out of there. Okay? So he managed to get out of there and only put two scrapes to, onto the bottom of his brand new flats boat. Of course, the tide was going out, he was up and long, back into Long Creek, and by the time he got out, he ran out of water and he just snuck it in over the top to get back into the ICW. So, um, and if you're an inshore fisherman it's not, and it's getting stuck stuff, it's not if you get stuck, it's when you get stuck. Okay, everybody does it. I mean, I can tell you, I've pushed my boat off too many damn sandbars and oyster bars in my time since I've been here. And if you don't do that, you know, you're not going to catch any fish because you're not going to get to where the fish are. All right, uh, finally, uh, tidal flow determines where the fish are. I've got a little diagram. Right, right spot, right time, right tackle, you know, understand what's going on. You can't go on the water here and be brain dead. All right, you just can't do it because you're not going to catch any fish. Next slide. Okay, hopefully you can see it. This is in your handout, and this is really important. If you look at this, this is the same rock, okay? In the, in the, top, in the top diagram, it shows the tide running from left to right, and you see where the fish are stacked up? Everybody see that? That's in your handout. Now, this is the same rock formation with the tide going in the other direction. So wouldn't you think you'd really want to fish this spot when the tide's going this way, right? Here's all the fish here, right? Good spot. We want to fish that. Tide reverses, fish are gone. Does everybody see that? Okay. 
There's no such thing as a, as a spot that's an incoming spot and an outgoing spot. Not that I've found here. I mean, you can go down to the Keys and you can flip over to the side, side of a bar or something, and you can usually do something down in the Keys like that. It doesn't work that way here. Pretty much you're going to find the fish are going to be stacked up in a particular tidal se sequence here where you see all these fish up here and you see a lot less down here. So do you want to fish there? Yeah, maybe. You know, give it a shot when the tide's changing and see if you can pick one more off before you leave. But I'd be leaving. I'd be going to find another spot like this with, it, with that type of tidal situation going from the other direction. Does everybody understand that? Of course, that's a biggie. Okay, we want to talk a little bit, give you some definitions so that when you start talking about tides and things, that pe people are on the same wavelength. Um, the tide is the vertical movement, okay, um, of, of the water, and that means the, when, when you have incoming tide, the water goes up, and when you have outgoing tide, the water goes down, all right? And the difference between high and low water is called the range. So the tidal range is the difference between high and low. All right, uh, the current is the horizontal movement. That's the speed of the current. You'll see people actually look at that and say, okay, it's running 2.5 knots or whatever. But you can, you can see what happens there. Okay, incoming tide's called the flood. All right, and the, outcoming, the outgoing tide is called uh, the ebb. All right, um, the strongest current flow usually comes halfway, um, halfway between high and low. So, if you're fishing, if you're fishing redfish, redfish are lazy, and they love to, they, they don't like to work really hard for their food. So they'll turn around and they, the best redfish time when I, when I guided, my redfish trips were, were designed to, to uh, be on two sides of the tide change. So I either fish two sides, of, uh, two hours before the high, and two hours after the high, or two hours before the low and two hours after the low. Why did I do that? Because redfish are lazy. They're not necessarily opportunic feeders, but they're, they're grazers. Captain Jim Britton calls it, they're like chickens and they walk around, they, they go around with their nose in the ground, digging up little crustaceans and all that other kind of stuff, okay? And they don't like to work really, really too hard for that, so they wait until they have slack of water. Trout, redfish, uh, trout, snook on the other hand, are very uh, ambush type predators. They love to, they love to uh, feed in the uh, faster current because they more, more bait is flush past wherever they're hiding. So understand that. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Slack water occurs when there's no current flow whatsoever. And that's the, t that's the time you have a sandwich, you have a beer, or you have whatever it is that you drink because you're probably not going to catch anything up on the flat and slack water. Okay, this was, now this slide is not in your handout, but a couple things, that, and, and don't worry about this one, but look at the bottom one. This is basically the incoming tide, and it shows you the speed. It's almost the speed of the current. It's almost linear, so as the current goes up, okay, the sp as the current comes in, the speed increases, okay? And then when it starts going out, it slowly starts to decrease. So everybody see that? So it's kind of like a bell curve. It's more of a bell curve situation that, that shows you the, the uh, speed of the, uh, of the water is, high, is highest about halfway up. All right, so I mean, you, when you're out there, you should be able to see that. Um, and you should be able to, you know, kind of figure out what's, what's going on and where you want to go based on what the speed of the current's going to be. You know, a couple of things that you need to know about the tides. First of all, we have what's called, uh, their day is called a lunar day. And a lunar day is 24 hours and 50 minutes long. So every, if you look at your tide charts, every day high tide moves back an hour, give or take, right? So if it was high tide 8 o'clock this morning, tomorrow it's going to be 9-ish. The day after that's going to be 10-ish. And it's because the lunar day is 24 hours and 50 minutes long. All right, T. Um, so keep, just kind of keep that in mind. The tide, the size of the tide or the aggression of the tides is based on the relationship between the sun, the moon, and the earth. All right, when you have the sun and moon and earth in alignment, that creates a higher tides, okay, or more aggressive tides. 
And uh, they're basically called a uh, spring tide. And with a spring tide, and you actually get a spring tide and what's called a neap tide, N-E-A-P, you actually get two of those a month, and it depends. If you're looking, if you're looking you got that full moon up there, okay? The, the sun, the moon, and earth are in line, and you're gonna have, you're gonna have the uh, most aggressive tides. And when you have the, the earth, the sun, and the moon at 90 degree angles, you have less, uh, less uh, effect on the tides. So the tides are, are what they call neap tide, which is lower, lower highs and lower lows. Other part, there's two other pieces to the equation, and one is wind direction, particularly here. Again, Captain Tim talked about that. If you have a brisk westerly wind for a couple of days, it's going to blow the water off the flats, and it's going to actually reduce the amount, reduce the height of the water that's in the backcountry. Okay? If you have a north or northeast breeze, it blows the water in through Matanzas and Wet then you're going to get a higher level of water in the backcountry. All right? Uh, the other thing that happens is that if you have a brisk breeze going in either one of those two directions, it also changes the timing of the tide slightly. So you, it might, if you have a 20-mile-an-hour breeze out of, the, out of the east for a, a couple of days, you're going to find that, the tide, that high tide and low tide times that, are, that you calculate are going to be off by about 20 or 25 minutes because the wind is affecting that. So make sure you take that into consideration. And again, when you're up on the flats and when you're in places that, that, um, that we fish here, you need to be paying attention to what's going on around you. You just can't be brain dead when you go out there and know when it's time to go. Tides and currents are closer as you get to the inlet. There's a couple of things there. It's also the tidal range is higher. If you look at the tidal range at Matanzas Inlet, it's going to be about six or eight feet. If you look at the tidal range back in the western part of Pelissier Creek, you're going to find the tidal range is about a foot. So uh, if you're all the way back foot fishing the flats, you're going to find that the tidal range is only going to be about that much. And when it goes to that, that's when, there's, that's when the trouble starts. <laughs> okay? Everybody got, understand that? That, you know, you've got a lot more, the water, the delta in the water is a hell of a lot more closer to the inlet. It moves a lot faster. Okay, uh, there's a great spot if you want to go for bait, just where uh, the where you go out to Matanzas Inlet, and it meets the ICW on the northeast corner. There's a great bunch of little canals in there. Uh, great place to throw a cast net if you want some mullet. And I can tell you when the water runs out of there, man, it runs out quick. I can tell you from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs>